G'day everyone and welcome to the Trek Zone Spotlight. Matt Miller with you. Today's guest is the director and writer of Chance Encounter, a Star Trek fan film. It's part of my coverage of fan films done right. Last year, there was an incident on Melnor 6. Many of the colonists lost everything. What was that, Lieutenant? You have stolen a Starfleet vessel. He knew we couldn't send the ship after him. You say he used to come here a lot? Yes, with my wife. Where is she? He lost someone he loved deeply. And if he offers resistance? Why limit our lives to a set path now? You're young. You'll make mistakes. But what matters is that you follow your instinct and not be led by fear. It's beautiful. Something to remind us of this place. And the director and writer Gary O'Brien joins me now from his home in London. Gary, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, give us a, a spoiler-free uh, plot summary of uh, Chance Encounter. Okay. Uh, I guess it's a short film, so giving a spoiler-free summary is tough because uh, it's not very long. But basically, we have a love story um, but it, because it has a sci-fi twist, it's not conventional, although it kind of actually is. Um, we're using sci-fi to help us tell a, a conventional love story, but from a very unusual perspective. I don't know if that's a, a, a plot synopsis or not, but it's a, it's a description, if nothing else. Having, having, seen, the, having seen the short, I, I definitely think that is a, that's a perfect way to describe it. Um, oh, good. Where did, your, where did your love of Star Trek come from? Um, I guess just from being a kid, I used to watch it on the TV uh, here. Um, I was about 10, I think, when I would kind of, I would know what sort of school I was in, so I can figure out roughly the age. I remember drawing the, uh, the original series Enterprise on the whiteboard um, for some <laughs> reason. So that gave me a pretty good window of when it was that I first got into it. And yeah, I don't know, it's something about that show, isn't it, that we all like. It just, you can't really necessarily explain why you like the show so much, but it just strikes a chord in you somewhere and yeah so since I was about 10 I think. Fantastic. Um, when did you start having ideas for this short film? Um, I guess about a year ago because it was probably early 2016 and my friend and co-writer on, on films uh, Paul he and I have made short films in the past we've I think this is our 11th one something like that and we were just looking to do another short film um, we do like one a year or something like that, I guess. Um, and originally this film wasn't a Star Trek film. It wasn't even science fiction. I just had this kind of rough idea about having an older man and a younger woman paired because I thought that was an unusual pairing. And also generally, I think if you see an older man with a younger woman in a film, sometimes people assume something sinister is going to happen. And so we wanted to play, play with that idea. Um, but it wasn't sci-fi, it wasn't Star Trek, but we, we didn't really know what to do with that basic premise. And so Paul kept sort of generating ideas and little drafts of uh, sort of story outlines and ideas. And eventually he, he did one where he had this science fiction element in it. And then I thought, oh yeah, sci-fi, that maybe could work. And then as it developed, I kind of thought this, this could actually be a Star Trek film. And I'm obviously, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, but I wasn't pushing to do a Star Trek short film. None of our, none of our others have been. Um, and I said to Paul, you know, what do you think of that Star Trek thing? Is that a good idea or a bad idea? What? And he was like, no, no, let's do it. It's cool. So, so from that point on, it became a Star Trek film. And uh, yeah, and then we, we raised money for it later that year and, and went for it. Knowing that it was only about a year ago that the idea started forming, um, were the guidelines and, and the whole Axanar saga, did they ever play into your, into your mind about making Chance Encounter? Uh, no, not really, because it, it was really crazy timing because uh, the, the Axanar thing was going on in the background, but we didn't give it much 
you know, thought really. Um, I think the scale of their production compared to ours, you know, the diff you know, it's just a different kind of thing. We just, you know, we weren't putting too much stock into it. But then it really kind of came to a head. I forget exactly when it was sort of in this sort of about May or something, I guess, last year is when the fan guidelines came out and we were like literally halfway through our Kickstarter campaign. It was like a month long campaign. It came out halfway through. So we were like, oh man, we should have done this a, like a year sooner. And then this would all just be not a problem. Cause at that point we didn't really know what would happen. Um, mm. And, but we, we were like, well, we've written our script and we've, we're halfway through fundraising now. So let's just commit. And, and to be fair, most of uh, the guidelines, we were kind of, in line with anyway, so we we just thought, well, you know, it's a bit late now. If they want to sue us, then you know they can <laughs> they can go for it. I don't, you know, what can you do? Was that ever a, a concern of yours? Um, you know, being sued. Was there? Did you sort of feel that there might be something coming down the line, or, or were you pretty confident, knowing that, as, as you said, there that you were pretty much falling into the guidelines anyway? Um, there might have just been a few tweaks in in post as to um, things that needed to be done. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few factors that play with that, because I think, first of all, I think part, because also there was that, uh, what is it, John Van Sitters or Cr Critters? Yep, that, Sitters. That podcast yep. he did, Sitters, yeah. Um, I listened to that podcast where, you know, he was obviously in a position where he's saying, well, we've just pulled out these guidelines, but at the same time, I'm kind of trying to let you know that he was in a difficult position. I think, you know, uh, they were saying to him stuff like, you know, so you say 15 minutes, what if you go over 15 minutes? He's like, look, we're not gonna, you know, they're, they're guidelines. Um, and I think in all that he'd said, you know, stuff that's already up online, we're not gonna come after retroactively, the kind of grandfathering uh, concept. And we were like, well, we've already started raising money and, and got our script basically locked before these guidelines came out. So that alone gave us a lot of confidence. And like you say, you know, we were kind of by coincidence in line with a lot of it anyway. And, and, and furthermore, I mean, in some weird ways, um, it would have been, it's kind of more of a risk for the people that were making fan films before the guidelines, because there was no precedent. There was, you couldn't say, well, as long as we stick to these kind of tenants and you know, the broad direction and principle of these, these rules they've laid out, then, uh, then we know we will be fine. Whereas in the past, people had no idea what the precedent was or what could or couldn't happen. So in some ways, it's actually cleared it up for us. You know, um, you know who knows? It's a, it's a tricky, strange grey area all around, I think. But mm. I think we're, we're quite happy in our position with our little film anyway. I'm interested to hear your thoughts uh, on something that, uh, that's been a big bugbear for a lot of the Axonar supporters. And I don't really want to go into, in, into the whole in-depth of the case because uh, that's what my other coverage is for. But they do say that um, f two 15-minute shorts is not enough time to, uh, to tell a story, to tell a decent story um, in the Star Trek universe. What do you think of that? Um, I think... People who might say that are probably fixed on the idea that Axe and I was supposed to be a feature length thing. I'm not a huge fan of the animated series, but I do own the box set and I've watched it all. A lot of those are fan favorites, you know, uh, they're, what are they, 22 minutes long? So, yeah. yep. you know, I think if you look at it in that way, then I'd say, yeah, of course you can tell a start. I mean, hopefully we have done. I think our runtime is a, it isn't 50, it's more like 20 minutes, our runtime. Um, I hope we've told an okay Star Trek story in 20 minutes, you know, other people can judge that. But um, yeah, I think it just depends what you wanted to do at the start. If you wanted to make a, a two hour movie, then of course you're going to feel that that's not long enough. But, you know, like I said, our idea and our history was making short films, you know, our, this is in fact our longest one. All our others have been 15 minutes or less. So, Right. Well, and, and that's been the thing as well. And something else that uh, John Van Sitter said was that um, it, the series idea is out, um, so the same characters can't continue on for multiple episodes, but there's nothing to say that a storyline couldn't continue for a series focusing on other characters. So uh, that's something that could be looked at as well, is that you could extend this out to a two-hour uh, storyline, uh, focusing on different groups of, of characters. Um, talking of groups of characters, uh, the best part about Chance Encounter, I, I, I think, is that it does pay homage to um, those classic 
track episodes with not a lot going on action wise it's it's this big story that you're you're thinking about uh and without giving to as you said in the beginning there it is a little hard to to talk about it without uh spoiling uh key moments in in the short but um it just works on the level of two people um learning about each other uh and then we get a nice little sci-fi plot twist um, which is absolutely fantastic, and all the all the actors did really well. Um, were they professional actors that you that you had on set? Yes, yes, they were. And thank you as well. I'm glad you liked it. And yeah, you're you're sort of basically one of the first to, to see it because it's uh, yeah, it's it's brand new film, and so um, I'm kind of unsure what the reaction to it will be. I hope it's good, and you're you're promising what you say. So thank you for that. But um, yes, the actors were all professional actors uh, we didn't know any of them before the film we uh, that before we embarked on the film I just you know cast some actors using casting services and um, yeah and so hopefully that that shows in the fact that their performances are are good you know they're they're actors that's what they do for a living and so um, yeah all pro, all pro actors and was a lot of the planet side stuff filmed on location Yes, yeah. Everything that's on the planet is was was yeah out on location, which was a pain, frankly. I mean, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because if you if you do if you set your scene inside, then you, you need some sort of set or some extreme justification why why it just looks like a house or something. Uh, but on the other hand, if you want to shoot outside, where okay, it's some. Um, then, then you're then you're stuck with uh, with all the complications of being outside and wind and noise and you know losing the light and stuff. So yeah, you know half of about half our film was was inside and half of it was outside. Um, and there's you know pros and cons to each on such a low budget. You know. Mm. And did you utilise green screen uh, in inside on the interior locations? Um, no. No, it's all sets. I mean, there's there's like the odd hand, handful of shots which hopefully roll by quite quick and don't don't jump out at you. But no, it's it's you know for all intents and purposes, it's all shot in camera for real. So um, not too much green screening in this film. Well, that's absolutely fantastic, Gary. It's uh, it's a fantastic film. Cannot wait for it to come out on uh, February one, uh, and hopefully everyone watching will check it out and and love it as as much as I did. Cool, thank you. Yeah, and you know, it can be seen, it's on YouTube. And if you go to Star Trek um, then there's links to the film there and a whole bunch of other stuff and making of and, and trailers and, and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, Star Trek Please check it out and I hope you all like it. Awesome, Gary. Thanks very much. Everyone, check it out. It is available February 1 at Star Trek Shortfilm.com, as Gary said there. Chance Encounter, fan films done right. This is the Trek Zone Spotlight. I'm Matt Miller. Thanks so much for watching.